Hello everyone. I am Dr. Prakash Mungli, Professor of Biochemistry. In this video, let's talk about ribonucleotide reductase. How important is ribonucleotide reductase for our cells and for uh, evolutionary point of view and for our life? You know, ribonucleotide reductase is such an important enzyme. If there is an inactivity in this ribonucleotide reductase, it may not allow us to survive or it may not allow a survival of a human species. Why? Because you know DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. This deoxyribonucleic acid, it needs a substrate that is deoxynucleotide triphosphates. So, deoxynucleotide triphosphate that is the pentose sugar in DNA that is deoxyribonucleic acid is the deoxyribose. So, what happens here is the ribose sugar has to be converted into deoxyribose sugar to make deoxynucleotide triphosphates which are necessary for DNA formation and that is only done by a single enzyme in our body and that is ribonucleotide reductase. Imagine what happens if ribonucleotide reductase is not functioning or is totally mutated. It may not lead to a cell division. That means there is no life. That is it is such an important enzyme which is the only enzyme in our cell which has got an ability to convert ribose into deoxyribose so that DNA material is synthesized like the substrate for the synthesis of DNA is made possible. Right. Now, the substrates for DNA synthesis are deoxyadenosine triphosphate, deoxygonosine triphosphate, deoxycydinine triphosphate and deoxythymidine triphosphate and all that should come from ribonucleotide reductase enzyme and also ribonucleotide reductase will make sure there is a balance to the synthesis of all deoxynucleotide triphosphates. And this is the only enzyme that can do it. So, this enzyme, it is going to reduce the second carbon present in a ribose in nucleotide diphosphates and convert that into deoxynucleotide diphosphate. So, the second carbon in a ribose sugar is reduced here. So, that means hydroxyl group is removed. And how that hydroxyl group is removed? As you, uh, as you see here in the reaction, water molecule is getting out of the reaction because the hydroxyl group present at the C prime car carbon number 2. So, it is taken out and how that is done? So, there is a molecule called thioredoxin reductase which has got thiol group with SH enters into the reaction and go give those two hydrogens. And those two hydrogen will be incorporated with oxygen atom to make water and thioredoxin is oxidized now. And this oxidized thioredoxin has to be reduced back into a reduced form of thioredoxin and that will be done by using NADPH plus H plus and the enzyme that catalyzes this is thioredoxin reductase enzyme. So, ultimately the H and H plus that are necessary for reducing thioredoxin back into its reduced form is coming from NADPH plus and the major source of that is pentose phosphate pathway. So, here this is how a nucleoside diphosphate is converted into deoxynucleoside diphosphate by using thioredoxin reductase uh, enzyme product that is thioredoxin. Now, once we get deoxynucleoside diphosphate, these deoxynucleoside diphosphates can be converted later into deoxynucleoside triphosphates. And what are the deoxynucleoside triphosphates? It is uh, deoxy ADP converted into deoxy ATPs, and then similarly, we get deoxy cytidine triphosphate, deoxy thymidine triphosphate, and de uh, deoxy guanidine triphosphate. So, this is how all the necessary substrate for DNA synthesis is made available by the action of ribonucleotide reductase. Now, since it is such an uh, important enzyme and it is going to convert all these uh, nucleoside diphosphates into deoxynucleoside triphosphates, 
uh, this is all going on in one active site means individual or this specific nucleoside nucleoside diphosphates they are binding to the active site and coming out as deoxynucleoside diphosphate so that means only one active site is converting all like different nucleoside diphosphates into their uh, deoxynucleoside di diphosphate form so that means adp gets in and coming out as dadp then uh, cdp gets in coming out of dcdp udp gets in coming in as i means coming out as dodp like this so only one site is there so that means it should be highly regulated so that there is an equal uh, amount of synthesis of or a balanced uh, synthesis of deoxy nucleotide triphosphates are there here so now how that is done so the regulation of ribonucleotide reductase is such an important thing so it can happen at the transcriptional level it can happen at allosteric level and also it can happen at cell cycle specific degradation of this particular protein so let's see the allosteric regulation of ribonucleotide reductase enzyme so the positive allosteric modulator of ribonucleotide reductase is atp higher atp levels and the negative modulator of ribonucleotide reductase is datps so ribonucleotide reductase is such a complex enzyme and the regulation is also complex process so one of the two sites that i would like to mention here for ribonucleotide reductase is it has an active site where substrate will go and bind and also it has got a regulatory site where regulatory molecules will go and bind let's see how the regulation is done so whenever atp will go and bind to the regulatory site at that time so cdp will go and bind to the active site of an enzyme and it will be converted as a dcdp and this dcdp will be further converted into dctp and that dctp goes into dna synthesis and as the dctp going out so the udp will go and bind to the active site remember at the regulatory site still there is atp there right so udp coming and binding to the active site and going out as as a product dudp and this dudp will be converted to dump and the dump is converted into dtmp by thymidylate synthase enzyme and dtmp will be converted into d tdp and dtdp converted to dttp and that dttp is a substrate for dna synthesis so now we have two things already for dna synthesis that is dctp we have synthesized and dttp is there now so this dttp which is kind of building up it will go and bind to the regulatory site now and replace that atp from there and dttp will go and bind and whenever dttp binds to the regulatory site at that time gdp will come and bind to the active site and in the active site gdp will be released as a dgdp and this dgdp will be converted to dgtp and this is the third uh, substrate that we, uh, ribonucleotide reductase has synthesized now so so far we have dctp dttp and dgtp now and this dgtp when it builds up this will go to that regulatory site here and it's going to replace the dttp which was pre previously bound and when that is replaced now dgtp will go and bind to the regulatory site and when there is a dgtp in the regulatory site now adp come and binds to the active site of an enzyme and what happens to the adp adp is released as a dadp and this dadp will be converted into datp and the datp is now it can go into dna synthesis so so far what we have now we have dctp dttp dgtp and also datp these are the four substrates that are necessary for dna synthesis and whenever there is sufficient datp made by that time already there is sufficient dctp is made dttp is made dgtp is made and dttp is made now and this datp is made now and this datp will now finally will go and bind to the regulatory site and replace the dgtp from there 
and now the D ATP binds and whenever D ATP binds to the regulatory site know that it is a negative modulator of ribonucleotide reductase and then ribonucleotide reductase activity goes down. Why? Because sufficiently all the necessary substrate for DNA synthesis is made whenever there is an increase in D ATP. This is how it is. This is exactly how ribonucleotide reductase enzyme is regulated in our cell. It is a quite complicated process, lot of things going in and out and that this is what is the regulation. It is a complicated process, but it is because it is such an important enzyme. So, it has to be regulated and that is a highly complex thing and that is how our cells will do it. So, it is a fantastic things uh, that are going on here and that is why our human body is an amazing machine and what we understood is so little so far. So, that is what is a ribonucleotide reductase enzyme is. Let me quickly give you what are the inhibitors of ribonucleotide reductase. One of the inhibitor that is uh, inhibiting both ribonucleotide reductase and also thyroidoxin reductase enzyme is motaxafen gadolinium, which is used in brain tumor and the other one uh, is hydroxyurea. This hydroxyurea it is an inhibitor of ribonucleotide reductase. It is going to inhibit formation of deoxynucleoside diphosphates and that is how it acts as an uh, anti-tumor agent and used in myeloproliferative uh, disorders. Now, and also note that hydroxyurea, it is one of the action is through its nitric oxide as a metabolic product. It is going to increase the uh, expression of gene that is coding for gamma chains, especially in the erythropoietics or hematopoietic tissue and thereby increases fetal hemoglobin and that, that property of hydroxyurea is used in elevating signs and symptoms that are seen in sickle cell anemia because it can decrease sickle cell crisis. So, this is all about uh, a ribonucleotide reductase enzyme such an important and crucial enzyme for our survival. I hope this video has helped you in understanding this very important step in our uh, cell in making DNA synthesis. Thanks for watching. See you around. Thank you. Bye.